Have you ever looked at the night sky and felt scared? Like a chill went down your spine for no reason? If so, you're definitely not alone. It's supposed to fill us with wonder and excitement about the mysteries of the cosmos, but instead, that inky black void and those distant pinpricks of light weirdly make a lot of people super uneasy. You see, space movies and NASA images make it all look peaceful, serene, and beautiful from a distance. But the more you learn about what's actually out there, the darker and more sinister it becomes. This got me thinking, what exactly makes the idea of space so deeply unnerving and horrifying? Why does something so endlessly fascinating also trigger our most deeply rooted fears and phobias? To answer that, we need to look at multiple aspects to really determine what makes space so terrifying. This is astronaut Bruce McCandless venturing untethered into the infinite abyss on the first ever untethered spacewalk. Dwarfed by the immense blackness surrounding him, McCandless floats alone, encapsulated in his tiny white suit, a mere speck against the vast cosmos. It's an image that viscerally embodies the terrifying isolation, vulnerability, and existential insignificance we feel when confronted with the harsh, empty expanse of space. Our fear of the great unknown fuels much of the dread we associate with space. The eerie, consuming darkness triggers our deeply rooted megalophobia, which is the fear of things larger and more powerful than ourselves. But space's capacity to inspire terror goes beyond its sheer scale. It strips us of all the protective familiarity and comforts of life on Earth, leaving us naked against a realm of extreme hazards we are fundamentally unsuited for. Space is so incomprehensibly vast that there could theoretically be trillions upon trillions of planets in the universe, some potentially harboring alien life forms. It's a terrifying thought, but one that is very real. These themes are commonly used in video games to set a tone of eeriness or pure terror. Take the game Subnautica for example. The story has you crash landed on a water planet, surrounded by nothing but mysterious oceans. While it may seem familiar to Earth, Several factors make the environment eerie. Seeing the crashed ship in the background and having a visible reminder of the catastrophe that brought you to this planet burning in the distance contributes to an atmosphere of peril. It's an ominous sign that whatever brought the ship down could pose ongoing threats. Other games like Iron Lung explore a similar genre. The game takes place on a planet with multiple oceans that are filled with blood rather than water. Despite the game being primarily exploratory, there is a constant underlying fear and tension about what could be lurking unseen in this alien, bloody environment. Being confined to a small submarine with limited visibility out the windows creates a claustrophobic, vulnerable feeling. You're sealed in this tiny craft surrounded by the endless ocean of blood. Although these games are very different, they both present the same very prominent themes. Isolation, lack of knowledge, and vulnerability. These are the main themes that make space to us seem so terrifying. When we look up at the night sky, we're forced to confront our startling insignificance against the universe. It's coming face to face with the extreme limitations of our human existence that sparks such a deep feeling of terror about space. Space doesn't just make us feel tiny. It makes our entire species, our planet, and everything we know seem insignificantly small and meaningless compared to the absolutely enormous, uncaring universe. Let's start with one of the biggest triggers, the planets themselves. There's something deeply unsettling to me about the appearance of these planets, and I think we have a hard time truly comprehending just how alien these worlds are. You've most likely seen depictions of our solar system in science class with all the planets shown relatively close together. These illustrations make it seem like the planets are all part of one cohesive neighborhood, not too far apart. But in reality, the actual amount of space between each planet is insanely vast. 
take a look at this scale model that accurately represents the distances involved. Neptune, the farthest planet, is an incomprehensible 30 astronomical units away from the Sun. That's 30 times the distance between the Earth and our star. This disconnect between how we visualize the planets based on classroom models versus the true distance is part of what makes them so deeply unsettling to me. They aren't cosmic neighbors, but lone islands of rock and gas drifting in a lightless sea of oblivion, utterly alone for billions of miles in all directions. And that's just our own planetary system we struggle to accurately envision. There are likely trillions of other exoplanets scattered throughout a hostile universe whose unimaginable distances and unknowable environments make our own solar system's planets seem almost quaint by comparison. I know some may not feel that same sense of eeriness when looking at images of the planets, but I think changing our perspective and imagining how these bodies would actually appear from Earth can really convey why they invoke such feelings of fear. Take our own moon, for example. Now imagine if that was Mars dominating the sky instead. A massive reddish orb, ominously glowing in the darkness. The Martian surface at night would make the sky a dark blood red instead of our moon's white tone. Now looking at Venus, rather than a palely lit moon, we'd be stuck under the burning brilliance of this planet's highly reflective atmosphere. It's so bright that even at night it would look like day. As we gaze further out, Neptune and Uranus would appear as twin defect presences in our sky, strangely hued orbs of blue and green respectively. At that distance, we'd only be able to see their color and size, but something about those precise jewel-like tones would feel fundamentally uncanny compared to Earth's warm familiarity. Then there are the gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn. Words can scarcely describe the terror they would bring if they loomed in our night sky. Jupiter's enormity alone would stretch across a huge portion of the sky. You would be able to witness the everlasting raging storms on the surface. As for Saturn, its massive diameter would be joined by those saucer-like rings encircling the entire gas giant at a slant, utterly dwarfing our Earth. The sheer presence of such a thing in our sky would be beyond words. If you're still not convinced, let me show you one last thing. We have seen the surface of Mars, and we have seen estimations of what Venus would look like, but what about the gas giants? Well, because they are made up with almost all gas, you would basically be able to go straight through it. It's also been proven that it's impossible to send any type of rover or spacecraft into their atmosphere due to the harsh conditions. So I'm going to show you a simulation of what it would look like if you were to fall into these gas giants.
Some of what makes space so terrifying is that there is no sound due to the vacuum of space, just complete silence. So of course planets wouldn't give off any sound, right? Well, they actually give off radio waves that can be translated into sounds by NASA, and saying that these sounds are creepy is an understatement. Although space to me is deeply unnerving, I still see the beauty in it. Looking into space is something that is indescribable. There are certain parts of space that are breathtaking, and there is really nothing on Earth like it. We only have explored or seen 5% of space, so we really don't know what else could be out there. 